So how are you feeling? John Riggs here. I love making repros. It's one of the reasons I started this channel in the first place, was to show you how to make your own repros. But as time goes on, as I attend new conventions, people ask me, hey, how do you do that? How do you make repros? I was like, all the videos are on my channel, right? So I look back on the first ever tutorial I did on this channel, this channel right here. I don't know what potato this camera came from, but when I went back and saw my own clip, check this out. How are you feeling? It's Riggs and I wanted to show you how you can- I was like, you know what? Maybe it's time for an update. Not that this camera here is the best ever. And I'm still working on getting a new camera, but for 2017, I want to give you an updated tools I use when I make repros. And there's gonna be some new stuff added in this one that I didn't show in the previous video. I've been gifted a few items along the way and there's a few new tools along the way that I've gotten to like and uh, appreciate more. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And if you can't wait, check out the link in the description below and you can see all the tools. If you need, need to get them all at once, um, I've linked to most of the tools I could find and you can just click those links, um, grab the things you need and you'll be well on your way to making your own reproductions either for personal use, maybe you wanna make a couple of them for conventions and stuff like that, and it's all good. foremost, you're going to need an EEPROM programmer. Now, I use the Top 3000. It's the one I like because it has a chip set big enough, a uh, pin set big enough to do uh, Sega Genesis games as well. Now, you can use the GQ4X. That's the standard, and most people use that, and there is a 16-bit converter. In fact, you can buy both of them at, in, the, in one purchase. They have a bulk deal that you can do for a great deal. I'm getting a link in the description below. Um, but this one is already equipped for all that, too. All I gotta do is plug it in. I do have to use a Windows 7 netbook that I have for this, a Windows 7 computer, um, to get it to work. However, I've heard of a lot of people who have gotten this to work on their Windows 10 machine. Just it's already set up for my Windows 7 computer, so I just, I just use that. <laughs> Old habits die hard, right? Now you're gonna need a soldering iron and some solder uh, because you're going to need something to solder the wires into place, solder the pins into place and all that. Any soldering iron will do. Now this one isn't great, but it works. Um, this one actually, I could use an upgrade. Um, man, this tip is really shot here. Again, any soldering wire works. When I first started making repros, I'm serious. I just went to Walmart and bought like the $5 soldering iron and it worked great. And if you're wondering about the solder, I use a 6040 resin core. That's the one I'm using right there. But whatever works best for you, I think this is about the best one. If it's too thin, you have to use too much of it. If it's too thick, it might glob up the board or something like that. So this, this is about perfect for me. And to go with that soldering iron, you need a desoldering iron. This actually sucks up the solder. If you're going to remove the pins from an old board, and I'm going to show you how you can make repros using new boards, I would actually concur to you as a plea. Don't destroy any games you don't have to. But you are able to do that, that's up to you. I'm not, I'm not telling you what or what not to do, I'm just telling you how to do it, right? So this here, this is a desoldering gun. You see the tip there. You put the pin on there, pull the trigger, the solder gets sucked up into this uh, chamber here. They don't make this anymore. This is the Hako 808. I love this device. They don't make it anymore, but there are similar ones on the market. And again, link in the description below. Uh, they have one that's similar and similar in price too. It works just as well. In fact, when this one dies, that's the one I'm gonna buy. They do have a desoldering bulb sucker that you kind of press down on the bulb, put the pin over it, and then when you let go, it sucks up. And I used one of those for a long time too. In fact, that's the cheap way to do it. This thing's pretty pricey, but if you're just getting into repros and you're like, I don't know if I'm like gonna be long-term, I just wanna make a couple on this side, that little bulb thing might just be perfect for you. This is more like if you're just gonna do this a lot. And you may have seen these guys before. You take your soldering iron to heat up the solder. This thing's compressed down here. After the solder is all melted and everything, you quickly have to push this over it. Hold it, push the button, and it sucks up the solder. I would not recommend this. <laughs> this thing is a pain. After you use something like that, or even that bulb one, this thing is, uh, like I said, pretty much worthless. So I wouldn't worry about this one at all. If you're unsoldering EEPROMs, an EEPROM remover comes in handy. You don't want to use a screwdriver. The screwdriver might scratch up the circuit board. That might cause some serious damage. Something like this, you just barely pop it in there. Um, you can check out a link as well. There's a little clipper thing that you just kind of like grab both sides and pick it up. That thing works wonderfully too. You talk about wire, gotta have some wire. Any coating wire will do. This is actually a pretty thick grade. So if you're doing something that has a bunch of wires on it, this one you might not actually be able to stick the cart back into the thing. And I've done that before too. But if you're super lazy, I'm not talking about lazy, I'm talking about efficiently lazy. That's me, I tag myself as efficiently lazy. If there's a quicker way to do something so I can get on with my life, I'm gonna find that quickest way to do it. And my buddy Jake pointed out, they actually sell 
pre-cut wire. And it has to be the coated wire too, because you don't want the other wires that touch anything else on the board. To help you clip the wires, some old rusty uh, wire cutters, needle nose pliers will do just fine. They happen to be rusty. I've had these since I was like 10. And you might have to do a little bit of wire trimming. You might have to do a little bit of something like if the thing's going through the board needed to stimp off the wires. Wire cutters work great, but I actually prefer finger, fingernail clippers. Fingernail clippers, if I can articulate it, uh, they get right in there and it gets the job done really quickly. Of course, if you're opening games, closing games, you gotta have these at all times. If you're a collector, you should have these at all times. These are security bits. There's one that's a 3.8 millimeter security bit. It's a 3.8 millimeter security bit, or star bit sometimes it's called. And there's also a 4.5 millimeter one. The 3.8 works for Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, a couple of Sega Genesis games, but not many, um, and systems as well. The 4.5 is almost exclusively for Sega Genesis. So if you're doing Genesis games like me, you gotta have one of these. And if you don't wanna buy the actual screwdriver part of it, you can buy bits for your own personal screwdriver. You know, so if you got something like this, hey, nothing wrong with that at all, man. Efficiently lazy, I'm telling you. And any other standard jeweler set style screwdriver will be just fine too, because some of those like five screw games, they don't have the security bits on them. They're the old fashioned, like uh, not quite Phillips style. Some of the new carts, they'll use the Phillips style screws, but then some of the older games use like the little uh, flathead style. So it has to have something like this. You can find these for like a buck at the dollar store. We were talking about EEPROM programmer, soldering EEPROMs, programming EEPROMs well. You're gonna need some EEPROMs as well. Now you can order them from America, but you pay a little bit more. If you don't mind ordering from China, they show up about a month later after you order them, but you can get them for super, super cheap, like half the price or more sometimes too. I use a few different kinds depending on what the game is. This is the M27C512. This is for like your in-ROM and C-in-ROM games. Now this one here is the M27C2001, or sometimes you can find like AMC, 020 or something like that. That's for the bigger Nintendo games. So like, you know, SN ROMs, TK ROMs, TL ROMs and stuff like that. I use this big guy here. Now there is one in the middle. It's a one that like 1001 as opposed to the 2001. And sometimes those work great too for a lot of games. But just to be safe, to make sure if the game is like a big game, like a, like for instance, Earthbound or something like that, Earthbound Zero, you're going to play, you know, Mother One, you're going to have to use one of those too. So I usually just get these in bulk. It makes it a lot easier for me. This one, don't you have to use it very often, but the M27C4001 is the big boy. This is the one you use for like the Mario 3 mix. It's the one you use for Metroid Rogue Dawn. You'll have to use something like this for the Sonic uh, NES hack, so. It's, it's always handy to have a couple of them on hand just in case. I can't really see the numbers on this one anymore, but this is the M27C801. This is a one meg for Super Nintendo Repro. So if you're making one meg games, like the Fireman, like, uh, Pop and Twin, or you know, uh, the other like one meg games or something like that for the Super Nintendo. That's where that one comes into play. This big boy here is the M27C322. 322. This is a four meg and it works for Super Nintendo games if you have the four meg board, and I'll show you that here in a moment. It also works for just about every Genesis game, depending on how Genesis games work. When you use the new boards for Genesis games too, and I'll, I'll show you that here in a moment. With the EEPROM programmer, quite simply, you just place it in the lowest part of the board, flip it up so it locks into place, you program the game onto your computer, and then when it's done, you unlock it, pop it back out, and you're good to go. Now the pins, you can't really see it, but the pins are a little fanned. They're kind of sticking out a little bit. Uh, my buddy sent me one of these, man, and I had never even heard of these, but these are great. This is an EEPROM straightener. It literally does exactly that. You pop it into place just like that, and you squeeze the sides, and it straightens the pins so you don't have to worry about folding them in place. You just pop them into place. Pretty handy to have, just in case. The cool thing with EEPROMs is the EEPROM stands for Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory, which means you can erase them. You're gonna have to have an eraser. This is a cheap chunk of plastic that has a UV light in it. It works beautifully, <laughs> and it's pretty cheap too. In fact, a lot of times when you buy an EEPROM programmer, you can also buy a bundle deal that comes with one of these too. You just pop it in there. It's kind of like a little sauna for your EEPROMs. You put the EEPROMs in there, close it up, turn on the UV light, and you're good to go. Just let them bake for a little bit, Hey, they'll be erased in no time. You can program something else on there. This is one of those things you don't really need, but I bought one anyway. It's a heat gun. You can heat up the labels of your Nintendo carts to peel them off really quickly. Well, you can do that with a blow dryer as well, but the heat gun works wonderfully. The only problem with this guy is you can't leave it on the cart for too long because the cart will warp. It is plastic after all. And again, you don't need to destroy any more games to make repros. You can use brand new parts. Several places, this is one for the Super Nintendo here. You have a spot for a battery. You pop the EEPROM in there, you're good to go. Several places have it. Retro stage.net check out more tough games so many more places have these circuit boards I gotta do is I gotta do is pop the game in place you're good to go in fact here's a quick look at a two meg Super Nintendo board this is from my buddy 
Muramasa. Check out Muramasa online as well. Link in the description below. They also make new boards for Nintendo. This is an S SL ROM, SK ROM. You can make new Ghostbusters too. You can make Holy Diver using one of these boards. And this is that four meg Genesis board I was talking about. With this, you can make any Genesis game pretty much. All you gotta do is program it, pack it up, whether it's a one meg game, two meg game, as long as it doesn't require a battery, all of those great Streets of Rage 2 hacks, you can put it on here. It's cool. And in the previous video, I didn't even talk about Nintendo 64 repros because Nintendo 64 repros wasn't a thing yet. Well, it is now. And there are two sources that you can make your own Nintendo 64 repros at home. In fact, this is what the board looks like. And I've showed you a video on this. You can check out a link in the description below uh, or check out the card there uh, where you want to make your own Nintendo 64 repros. All you got to do is take one of these. You get their blaster. This is from RetroStage.net. Pop it in upside down. You tell it what you want to program and you're good to go. And now Retro Circuits is doing their own board as well. And this one's pretty simple too. I'm gonna do a specific video later on on how to do it with the Retro Circuits board as well. Um, but done very similarly. All you gotta do is pop the thing in there and uh, with the uh, connection to the USB, it reads it like it's a uh, like a flash drive or something like that. You just say, I want this game on there and you're good to go. Pretty sweet, right? And you can make your own uh, Ocarina of Time Master Quest. You can make your own Translated Wonder Project J2. Man, nothing wrong with that. It's always a great gift, too. I'll, video, I'll do a video on this guy here pretty soon. When you're done using your soldering iron, you want to clean it off. One of these things, you just pop it in there and it kind of drips the solder through at the bottom. You can kind of empty it out here. Actually, I wonder how this looks right now. That doesn't look so bad. And if you're looking for shells for your games, well, those are pretty common nowadays. You can check out eBay. You can check out AliExpress. Castlemania Games carries them. 1UP Retro is another source that carries them. There's a lot of ways to get your Nintendo carts if you're just looking for the plastic thing that goes on them as well. In fact, a lot of these sites like the Mordoff Games and RetroStage.net, they also do carry uh, shells for those two. And as it stands right now, that's a lot of it actually, but you don't actually need all of those parts. The EEPROM programmer, soldering iron, uh, a few other things, get some EEPROMs. Hey, you'll be pretty good to go for your first couple of them, but the other things you might want to invest in later on if this is something that you're looking at maybe doing long term. If you're new to the channel, I have other videos on how to do specifically an NROM game, how to do specifically an SL ROM game or an SK ROM game. Maybe you want to make Holy Diver for yourself, how to do one meg Super Nintendo games, how to do Genesis games. It's all on here. Again, take care. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. More tutorials on the way. Thank you. It's been a long time since I've done this, man. This is awesome. And I hope I get to see you at a convention sometime in the near future. Take care. We'll see you.